Riders, welcome back to the channel. And there is a big question on everyone's mind. Electric mountain bike or traditional mountain bike? I don't know what's better. Let's go find out. Now today, we're going to do a mountain bike test. Everyone has that mountain bike ride they do midweek. Normally a one and a half, two hour ride. It's more a fitness ride. It's nice to get a bit of adrenaline in and you know, sort of tickle those boxes. Now after buying an e-bike, I wasn't sure that this, I'd be able to do this ride on the e-bike. I thought it might be a bit boring, a bit easy. Anyway, so I'm gonna do a test. So it's two rides, two two hour rides. And this is the ride that I've done for the last five years in my local trails. I'm gonna judge it on fitness. So I'll be wearing my Garmin heart rate monitor. Please work. How many downhills I get done and also the quality of those downhills. Like, is it more fun on my trail bike or is it more fun on the electric mountain bike? And also the mind space. A lot of us have very busy lives and uh, when I get out on the mountain bike, it's kind of like a bit of a Zen moment. It's a bit of meditation and uh, you know, it's, it's that time for you to think. So, so anyway, that's the idea. And the bikes that I'm gonna I'm gonna be riding are the decoy, the YT decoy, the new electric bike. Had it for three months now. There's a lot more videos, unboxing, first ride, and I'll be doing my review very soon. And also my amazing Banshee Phantom. This is a 120 105 suspension trail bike. It has the geometry of a hardcore enduro bike. I love this bike. They're the bikes. That's gonna be the test. So I'm gonna go back to the studio and I'm gonna analyze the data on Strava and I'll let you know. Anyway, I hope you like it, riders, and let's see what happens. Riders, so day one in Pardo, my local trails, and I'm on the e-bike, and it's the two hour local ride test. Drop it in, first downhill. You first one down. So on my normal ride when I come out for that two hour ride, I normally get in about three to four downhills. So you know, it's an important part of my week. I like to get out and do that midweek ride. It's more of a fitness ride, but at the same time, it's not exactly cross country. So I get to get a little bit of adrenaline in, which is great. And it's in five minutes and I'm back at the top again, smashing out. The tubular, which is a really fun sort of like roller coaster downhill. This is the question that I had when I was going to buy an e-bike: was for these type of flowy trails, is it going to be as fun? And look, you can't play with the bike as much, but it's still bloody fast and bloody fun. There's a few jumps you can't hit. But on the whole, it's bloody good. Downhill three. <laughs> Up to the top in five minutes again. Nice little jump here. Line up straight over the top. If you watch my other videos, you know this is my local trails. That is a good one. They're not mental trails, but as I said, I don't have to get in my car. I can come here, have a nice bit of exercise, bit of adrenaline, go home, back to work. Nice little transfer here. Eww. All right, so I'm gonna go up. It's like a back road, single track, up to the top of that same downhill I just did for downhill four. But I'm gonna do a little bit of training up this because it's a nice, it's a bit of a cross country single track up. Any of the riders out there that are Spanish and they know this ride. This trail, it's normally pretty hard to get up on an all bike. And I'm just boosting up at 20 k's an hour. Granted, my heart rate's at about 175. The interesting thing on the e-bike is takes that last pinch off your legs. 
even though my heart is heart rate's kind of peaking out my legs aren't they're not dead yet okay so this is a pretty techy corner so we've got a no problem I got to saddle on that one Whoa. And we're back at the top again. Heart rate maxing out 182. And we're off again. Let's go. Straight down the middle that time. Ooh, might be faster. A massive bonus on the e bike. I just got lost a little bit. I mean, I've come to this place so many times. And just got lost a bit, a little bit. And uh, I found it, ah, oh, there, I missed it. Ugh. Found a sick trail. This place is like little rabbit warrens everywhere. But anyway, it looks like a really nice trail, so I'm gonna head down it. So this will be downhill four. Five, sorry, downhill five. This is probably a spot I'd prefer my trail bike. It's nice and flowy. Actually, I know why I haven't done that track, because it kind of sucked. <laughs> Riders, day one done on the e-bike. Got to admit, I'm pretty tired. I only give myself a day, 24 hours or a little bit longer to recover. And then I'll be out the trail bike and see how it compares. Okay, riders, day two on the trail bike. Let's see how I go. So about five k's into the ride. And I reckon it's been probably two or three months since I've ridden my, my Banshee trail bike. Uh, kind of made a promise to myself I'd, I'd really stay on the decoy to get used to that weight and it's worked because I hop back on this this thing feels super light super responsive definitely think it's going to be supper street out here today it's hot it's windy and uh, anyway let's see how it go okay riders at checkpoint one not gonna lie I'm feeling it on the trail bike it's uh you know it's hotter today and it's windy and uh, run out of water, but I'm loving it. It's, you know, any bike's a good bike. So we're going to do the first downhill and uh, halfway down, first downhill. Coming up that hill hurt, man. And is it worth it having a trail bike on these downhills over an e-bike? Look. First feeling is the bike's it's obviously more playful. Um, it you know it likes to bounce around. You can pop off things, uh, but the e-bike's more planted for sure. This is one of my favourite trails here. So fast and definitely is more a trail bike trail than an e-bike trail. Could have been bad. Definitely loving the playfulness of the trail bike. Dropping back into the last part of it. It's a nice little tabletop that you can manual over. Hard left. Woo. And we're down. So that's two down, two downhills down, done. And uh, run out of water. So I'm gonna head up to the back section of the trails 
got to be careful with the with the wardens, with the park rangers, because I need to get some water. And there's only one spot to get water here. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, riders, but I've just seen Ranger, and uh, he's sitting right at the top where the water is. I desperately need for water, but I can't get any. So the ride is over. This will be the third downhill, almost the top of the second mountain, and I'm gonna have to head back, and it's gonna be about two hours. Also, another mess up, the Garmin. <laughs> The Garmin went on auto pause, so I haven't recorded half the track, the trail. But it's okay because I've done a two-hour ride here so many times. So I'll go back through my Strava and find a similar ride, and we'll review that against it. Sorry, riders, these things happen. Riders, welcome back to the studio, and I'm really sorry I lost the data from the second ride on the trail bike. But you know, this stuff happens, especially when you're you're shooting a video for YouTube. And, uh, but you know, not to worry because I have done that ride so many times on my trail bike. And I just pulled from two months ago, a ride I did uh, just before the summer break. You know, this is more a, an idea for us to look at the differences. It's not a technical, uh, test and you know which is better. It's, it's not really what I want to do. Okay, riders. So let's start with the data But first check out the new another new t-shirt I'm having a play around with printing and I've got some printing done locally uh, Riders if you know anywhere in the USA or in Europe that prints very good quality online Could you let me know? I'd love to, love to hear about that. Okay now to the data the decoy we did 36 Ks and 153 moving minutes. Total elevation, 579. Heart rate average, 140. And maximum, 185. And 180 calories. Very impressed, actually. Um, and on the Banshee, 30 kilometers, two hours and four minutes total moving time, total elevation 393, heart rate average 118, maximum 171, and calories 1021. Okay, granted, maybe uh, I rode harder on the e-bike, uh, maybe I have more fitness now, uh, this was before summer, so look, as I said, this is just a comparison, it's not a specific scientific test, you know, I don't, I don't do that stuff. So those numbers are really impressive, and I think the best thing I took from doing this test, especially on the e-bike, it's very interesting that I could keep my heart rate at a, a 140 beats per minute. Um, you can regulate your heart rate really well on an e-bike, um, and I, it's probably better for you, you know, a lot of us are older guys, and uh, to be peaking and dropping your heart rate a lot, um, it's probably not that healthy for us. So I was really happy with that, and the way I was doing that, I was using Eco, Trail, and Boost, and also the gears. And so when my heart rate, say my heart rate peaked up to 160, I would just make it easier. So I'd put it in Boost, and just bring that heart rate down, and vice versa. If my heart rate dropped to 120, I would just take the, the resistance down. So that was a massive bonus. I had no idea you could do that. And you know, I've been riding this bike for three months, so that's, that's a win for the e-bike. Also, I love that I could use the e-bike as kind of recovery. So, you know, it's not gonna be perfect for every trail, but at this place, there's like three or four specific downhills that we all love to do. And they're about an hour, they're about a minute, minute and a half downhills, and you come out of that downhill pretty knackered. But then you, there's a fire road that takes you straight up back to the top. And if you put it in boost and go into recovery, your heart rate drops to like 130, 120, 115, you stay warm, but you're prepared for the next downhill. I mean, I really like that, and also I hadn't thought about that before. So let's get to the feeling of the bike, e-bike versus trail bike. Look, if I'm 100% honest, the trail bike was better. 
but it wasn't that much better. It was like, let's say we give the, the trail bike a 10. I'm saying the e-bike got an eight. Um, but let's think about it. I did seven downhills on the e-bike and three downhills on the trail bike. So, you know, at the end of it, I would say what was more fun, I would say the e-bike because I got more downhills and I left that ride not wanting more downhills. And on the trail bike, this ride and all the rides, I normally leave tired, exhausted, um, but not, I don't have that adrenaline fix, you know, I, and I definitely felt that on the e-bike. Okay, and that Zen moment on the bike, that time to think and uh, do a bit of meditation, uh, headspace, I think they're calling it these days. Um, it was better on the trail bike. Uh, E-bike, you're out in the bush, you, it's just you and the bike. Uh, when you do, I mean, the Shimano is pretty quiet and it, the sound isn't that annoying, but it's still there. And so basically, um, you know, it's buzzing away. So for me, uh, and also being in the saddle on the trail bike, suffering up those hills, it is a time to think. And uh, I get a lot of my thinking done while I'm riding. And, you know, so I'd say the trail bike wins that one. Sorry, e-bike. Okay, this is interesting. The e-bike, the data says that I used more energy. My heart rate was averagely higher and I used more calories. Um, and I obviously did more Ks. Uh, but when I arrived home, I didn't feel completely smashed. I, well, I was tired and I felt like I'd gone for a ride. But after the trail bike, granted it was probably five degrees warmer and I did run out of water, um, but I was really, really tired uh, going back on the trail bike. Um, it felt like a much harder ride. So on the data it says it wasn't, but my body told me it was. It's interesting, you know, you know, obviously pushing up the hill and, and doing more interval training because your heart's going up and then down, probably the reason why I was so tired. And also, I think I have lost some top end strength climbing on my trail bike from using that e-bike. I think I've lost a little bit of strength, which is I'm not happy to know about. You know, obviously three months on the e-bike will take its toll in that particular area. A few side notes. Um, so look, it was a two hour ride on the e-bike. Uh, on this particular type of ride up and down, not, not epic mountain climbs, I reckon you've got about four hours in the saddle on that battery. I arrived home after 36 kilometers and I had two bars left. On this ride, it was half an hour there, half an hour back on kind of single tracks, um, paved roads, and it was all flat. And I did find the 25K limiter pretty annoying and a bit frustrating. Um, it was difficult for me to stay in a in zone. It was difficult for me to actually exercise. Um, even though the Shimano motor does decouple really well, so when you hit over 25, that transition from 25 to 26 is quite smooth. And you know, it is, it, you still are pushing 23 kilos plus your body weight. So I found that annoying. I would, I don't want to de-restrict my bike. I think it's going to be a big problem for us riding in the future, but it would be nice to get it up to 30, 35, because on the flat, let's be honest, a good cross country rider or a road biker can easily sit at 35 kilometers an hour. I broke my foot and my hip really badly a few years ago. And uh, when I was doing my rehab and recovery, I bought a X, an XC mountain bike and I just did Ks. Uh, to get my strength back to 100% was a real pain. Um, it was about nine months. Um, and it made me think if, if you've got an injury or you've got an ongoing injury, um, it's, it's something that an e-bike could really help you with because you know, if, you're, if you're coming back from an injury and you, you know, get blood into your body, um, get that body moving, and uh, as you get fitter, you can obviously use less resistance. So I wish I had an e-bike back then uh, and I wish I knew more about them, but that is definitely something to think about if you have an injury. Okay, so my final thoughts, e-bike, trail bike, what's better? To be honest, they're bikes. I love riding every bike. Um, for me, I enjoy both rides. They both have pros and cons. Um, and you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna be one of those people that's like, e-bikes, only e-bikes. Uh, but maybe it will silence some of the haters out there 
the people that say e-bikes are for lazy people. I mean, for me, I think lazy people are lazy people. Um, you can ride a, any bike fast or slow. Um, so anyway, that was kind of the data that I, I got and I, I really found it interesting and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Riders, I hope you liked that video. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't brought out the YT decoy full review yet. That will be coming hopefully in the next few weeks. I'm actually waiting for YT to reply to a few questions I have on warranties and battery and, and charging. I, I, I want it to be a full review. Um, anyway, so that should be in the next couple of weeks. Riders, smash that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot. Loads more great e-bike content coming. It's Friday. It's the weekend. Get out there and enjoy your bike, and I'll see you next week. See you later. Thank you.